Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Justice League issue number 19. Did I go with the digital copy this week? Oh, hell no, I did not. What? So, absolutely had to get this on physical. Even though I was not particularly happy with the cover, I'm looking at this like, what the hell is this? Is this like Mr. Mitzia Spitlick? Sure enough, it actually was. And uh, basically, when it all comes down to it, we kind of get a couple moments of X-Men's Inferno as far as Justice League Inferno, because like everything comes alive and demonized to start trying to eat them. Like, it's messed up man. It's messed up. Justice League Inferno. Go. All right, so let's get started on who actually made this comic book because it's kind of important. <laughs> I don't know why anybody else doesn't do this. The Sixth Dimension, Chapter 1. Uh, Scott Snyder and, and Jorge Jimenez did the plot. Snyder did the words. Jimenez did the art. Uh, Alejandro Sanchez did the covers. Uh, yeah, the colors. Uh, Tom Napolitano on letters. Jimenez and Sanchez did the cover. And Rob Liefeld did the variant cover. Not too shabby, dude. Not too shabby. And, of course, Superman was created by Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, and everybody was created by somebody at some point or another. So, anyway, yeah, there you go. So, check this out. Uh, <laughs> they 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 realize that they need to get their hands on Mr. Mitzia Spitlick because they need to get to the fifth dimension because they're pretty sure that the, uh, the map on Hawkwoman's wings is actually a map to the fifth dimension. Well, after the the uh, Metropolis Inferno thing, the, the Justice League Inferno incident, they come to realize that, no, that's not the case at all. It's actually the sixth dimension, which is an entirely different dimension all in all. Um, I'm going to get into more on the dimensions in a bit for now. All of this was essentially a really messed up plot point. <laughs> And then this is going to have some repercussions in a major way. Superman does something really stupid at the end uh, in the form of blasting his, his heat vision, knowing that's the thing that takes the most energy away from him. But hey, uh, I guess we all do something stupid once in a while. I just complained in Doomsday Clock about uh, Lois Lane pulling Lex Luthor's gun on him after he just handed it to her and her not even being smart enough to check if there's a loaded clip or one in the chamber or if it's even, you know, off safety. I mean, I'm just saying, well, he did say it's on safety. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I have problems with people acting irrationally, but whatever, I, I guess it's just people. So anyway, <laughs> maybe they're just drawn to human. Um, this was an awesome comic book, dude. This was fantastic. I looked at the cover, and boy, I tried to judge the hell out of this comic book. I'm like, are we going back to the comics that are just not that great? Because I don't want to have a comic book that's not that great, dude. I really just don't. Like, I am not interested in going back to a Justice League comic where there's too much info in it. There's too much of too many things going on. It's just way too weird. It doesn't make sense, and nothing computes. And that's not the case at all. Everything, I think, in here was laid down perfectly. We got a lot. We did not get too much, all right? It's not the very hairy cusp, like one more little storyline in there and all of a sudden I'd be like, nope, mm -mm, can't take it. <laughs> but wow. Yeah, this was like, this was like the Goldilocks effect. You know what I'm saying? Too hot, too cool, too hard, too soft. That's what she said. I'm in Goldi Goldilocks. Just shut up, all right? Stop with your dirty minds. But anyway, that just right syndrome, okay? Where it's like, all right, perfect. So uh, yeah, I like this comic book. I generally did. However, <laughs> as a former electrical engineer, uh, I do have a huge problem with the idea of the dimensions mentioned in here. Uh, granted, all of this is simply to correct something in real life as opposed to what is, uh, what's been mentioned here in the comic book world. Um, it was so far off, so far gone, what we learned in here about dimensions that I remember this is simply, simply something that DC Comics has been saying for a long time. And um, this is just simply the comic book version, the DC Comics version of the dimensions. In reality, a single point would be a zeroth dimension, and that's even if you consider that that single point has one single inhabitant that is exactly the same size as that one single point. So when we're talking about like a single pixel, okay? A single pixel, and the inhabitant is the size of a pixel also. There's nothing there, nothing discernible. Are you there? Are you not there? Hard to tell because there's just a void, <laughs> all right? You you could maybe say a dot, but that's a real hard sell. Anyway, uh, first dimension would actually be a straight line when I was in the third grade, when I was in the third grade, when I taught the third grade and my students were in the third grade. Um, the, the, the example that I would give 
is uh, I would have a string that two students would hold. And I'd have another two students take their fingers like this, and they put it down below their waist. No, wait, that's a different that's a different thing. Um, they 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 take their uh, yeah the string and then they go forward. And I'd say, okay, now uh, you guys have to go to the other end. Obviously, they would release their fingers and you know change and go to the other ends. I'm like, okay, so clearly you can't do it while still holding on. They would try to you know eh, a little bit. They would always try to skate around it. So I made sure to bring shower curtain hook hooks. Uh, they're cheap. You know what I'm saying? Go and get them at a dollar store. You got way more than you're going to use, but use two shower hooks. Okay. You on this end, you on this end, same thing. Go on the side. Can't make it work. So the idea is imagine being inside of a garden hose, perhaps, but it's the size of a single pixel stretched out, monomolecular, if you will, just stretched, right? And bang, that is the first dimension. There is no way to pass anybody because that would involve a second dimension to be able to pass people. No, it would simply be bumping, bumping. So everybody's in, you've only got but so much elbow room, right? Uh, uh, the second dimension would actually be the um, the uh, uh, length or height, you know, whatever, however you're going to look at it. Usually like uh, it's, it's length and then height. So you could possibly go over someone also and move. So, you know, you could jump over each other, but there is no going around because there is no width. That's the third Third dimension. Now, a lot of people like to complain, what is the uh, the fourth dimension? They like to say, oh, it's time, or it's this, or it's that. Here's the, the correct answer. You don't freaking know. There's been a whole, I, I remember having to have a conversation with the head of the science department, and I won the argument because I had more facts. Um, that's the difference between learning how to teach and actually learning how to do and then becoming a teacher. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't go to school to become a teacher. I just went and became a teacher with, you know, what I knew from uh, engineering. Um, anyway, so I, um, yeah, the, 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 the argument is that um, the, the third dimension or the fourth dimension is actually you take this prism and this prism and then combine them together and make it and it's movement and it's the time. No, it's not. No, it's not. The best we can do is guess. Why? Because we don't exist on the fourth dimension. We can't imagine. We can oh, actually, we can only imagine. Our imagination is so limited. Why is Mr. Mitzi Spit look so smart? Well, that's one of the best things they've ever done in comic books. It's because he has far more imagination than we could possibly ever imagine. Um, to imagine what a second dimension, like a second dimension person trying to imagine what the third dimension is all about is ridiculous. It's preposterous. There's no way that second dimensional person could ever possibly comprehend what the third dimension truly is. They can only speculate and chances are they'd be extremely wrong because it's a far stretch of the imagination. Um, what do you call it? Uh, listen, as best as I can explain it, the best explanation that I've ever gotten, the explanation that will make you a believer the explanation that will make you feel like you will watch this explanation and you will feel smarter. You will feel like I've got to go out and teach this stuff. <laughs> like that's real talk. Go and check out Carl Sagan talking about it. I believe this was in 1978 is in my head, but it could have been 72, whatever. It's, it's, I think it was sometime in the seventies that he did this. Um, there've been a lot of people who have tried to replicate, but, but there's no point. Carl Sagan has done the absolute best job. So go and look up, um, uh, uh, dimensions, Carl Sagan, and uh, there's a YouTube video. It will explain everything you need to know about it. And then go and consider watching that entire video where he just goes on and starts talking about all sorts of different things. Um, the scientific community has lost a lot. Like I started thinking about this and right away that, that video, the Carl Sagan video comes to my mind. We have lost so much with, um, with the loss of Carl Sagan in this world, the entire world, everything. We've lost so much with, with his loss. We've, we've got plenty of scientists still alive today. We've got the Degrassi's, we've got the, uh, the Kaku's, you know what I'm saying? We, we've got the, the, these amazing people today. We've lost a lot of great people too. You know, we've lost the, the Feinsteins, the, uh, um, the Feinsteins. No, not Feinstein. I'm thinking, no, that's, uh, California, Ah, oh, geez. Wow. Really? Faraday? Not Faraday. Faraday's the cage. Um, although Faraday made the, the cage. The thing that's in your microwave. Anyway, Feynman. There we go. We've lost Feynman. We've lost, um, uh, what do you call it? Einstein. We've lost Tesla. We've lost uh, um, Newton. You know what I'm saying? We've lost a lot of greats. But I feel that there was no greater loss than the scientist who actually explained science, uh, science to non-scientists. And that's Carl Sagan. I believe that the Trumps of the world, the Obamas of the world, the Clintons of the world wouldn't have a, a ground to stand on when it comes to things like climate change 
if we had Carl Sagan here, because no one else defines the ability to convey science better than Mr. Sagan himself. And at the end of the day, with 97% approval uh, or, or um, uh, backed up story by the scientists in the world, and there's no way anybody's rich enough to pay all of those scientists off. That's just preposterous. Um, what do you call it? But the, uh, the idea of actually having all of these scientists, the 97% of the scientists agreeing on climate change, which is something that's pretty much unprecedented in the scientific communities. Gravity didn't have 97% consensus rate until it was proven. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, until it was actually made a full-blown theory, you did not have 97% uh, agreement on the way that uh, the, the theory of, of gravity actually worked. That being said... Um, what do you call it? I'm pretty sure that somebody like Mr. Sagan could have turned that 97% into 99 point really high number percent because that's just who he was. And he would have taken the bully pulpit and he would have wrecked whoever was in office, whoever took that oath of, uh, oath of office for the presidency and anybody else who, who would have gotten in his way with nothing but pure scientific facts and patience that would have chipped away and shown just how utterly stupid everybody who, who denies climate change is. This has been your public service announcement from Comic Book University. This is a university, bruh. This is a university. You're getting credits. Kind of. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, yeah, so sorry, when I see something like that that's just so completely out there, I know it's just a comic book, and they clearly made it for the sake of a comic book. Uh, there are a lot more than six dimensions. In fact, uh, what is it, I think 11 is the cons uh, the consensus agreed upon by uh, Michio Kaku and, and the others who were responsible for string theory. Yeah, um, but as far as comic books are concerned, yeah, this is fine. I just wanted to make sure that it's actually understood what the real dimensional apertures really are. And yes, they're all around us. <laughs> all right, guys. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.